I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and travelling to the remotest parts of the world. It's early morning. I'm in a town called Geelong, a small industrial town not far from Melbourne. And I'm here to see my lovely new shiny Land Cruiser for the first time. A rare treat. This then is the start of a project that I've called the Toyota Land Cruiser 79 Dual Cab 300. It's a quest to do three things. To make the Toyota 79 dual cab available as Toyota should build it, with its shortcomings sorted. To do it at minimal cost and to have it available for sale through Toyota dealerships beginning in Western Australia. Ambitious? Sure. The Land Cruiser 79 300 is called the 300 because 300 millimeters is what we add to the length of the chassis to sort out its load carrying ability. That's the problem with the standard dual cab. When you load anything more than two or 300 kilograms on the standard load bay because it's all behind the back wheels, the front lifts up and handling goes to pot. Secondly, the axle correction. Toyota's axle is narrower at the back than at the front, which causes handling difficulties. We're going to sort that out too. And because now with the 300 millimeter chassis extension, now the vehicle is going to be able to carry much more load than the standard, we're adding a GVM gross vehicle mass upgrade as well. Multi-drive technology has been doing this kind of work for fleet and mining for decades, but not much for the average motorist. It turns out that there's nothing stopping them, but from a dealer level, it's not quite as simple as one might hope. So I, think, I think the beauty of the Land Cruiser, um, and often the detriment of a standard wheelbase, is that the chassis and suspension and everything is so robust that it takes a, a really great load, mm. but that can often be the downfall, especially on the dual cab. So just by moving the, um, the wheels back just gives you that bit better load distribution and, and um, yeah, it turns a good car into a great car. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how I put it. <laughs> my job is to make it easy, and by doing it myself, every step of the way, as if I was somebody who had just walked off off the street, I will prove that it can be done. This is not just some fantastic m magic trick, because there are many companies throughout Australia and they are approved, I don't know what other word to use, by Toyota. They are approved fitment centers that are permitted to adapt, change and modify Toyota's pre-delivery, pre-rego. In my case, the work is being done pre-rego, which means a federally approved secondary stage manufacturer's compliance plate comes with the deal. Doing it this way is far less complicated than doing it post-rego. My dealer organised the vehicle to be delivered directly to Geelong and once the work is completed, it will be delivered to my dealership where I will collect it. So it is in fact quite easy for anybody to walk off off the street and order one of these vehicles. The challenge is the dealers don't know. They understand the process but most dealers won't know what this product is. And that's where I come in. All right, what we're gonna do now is extend the chassis by 300 millimeters. But I'm not extending the length of the overall vehicle by 300 millimeters. I'm actually shortening the tray so that the overall length of the vehicle remains almost exactly like the original Vehicles. It, 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 it parks in standard garages, it's easier to manoeuvre in traffic, but what extending the chassis will do for the handling is it'll improve straight line performance, it'll improve towing performance, it will improve, most importantly, the load carrying ability. And it's done in conjunction with the rear axle width correction. There are two choices in Multidrive's price list. An axle replacement for a GVM of 3950, or a rear axle modification called two tracker GVM 3780. But what is very important to me is that I'm not adding any complications to the design. 
if you think about the Land Cruiser 70 series, if it wasn't for the Australian mining industry, my guess is that the Land Cruiser 70 would have been discontinued many years ago because the rest of the world's market is just too small to sustain it. This is my theory and my evidence that this is true is the fact that all of the major modifications and advancements on these vehicles are directed by Toyota Australia and follows through for the rest of the world. The process of lengthening the chassis is straightforward. The vehicle is put on a jig, the chassis is cut. So the joint piece, obviously we cut it, roll the chassis back, um, yes. put our replica piece in there. Right. Um, so the jigs and the, the yellow RHS underneath allow us to align the joint piece. Um, and then it's obviously tacked in, we remove all the, the um, joint jigs once the, the length's set correctly and the joint piece is in there. Um, and then we yeah, go into the process of um, prepping and then welding around. Um, so once that joins in, then the reinforcing channel comes underneath, um, all the way to the back spring hanger to up near the cross member here. Um, and after that is the uh, center bearing cross member goes in, which reinforces the join, um, as well as- There's an additional cross member. An additional cross member, right. that's right, yeah. Which, um, yeah, serves two purposes. A is to mount the center bearing and B is to um, add the required rigidity into the join. Right. Um, and keep, um, yeah, you're allowed a maximum of one meter centers um, between the join. Okay. Between, uh, yeah, between cross members. So we put that in there and um, yeah, it serves two purposes. But of course, extending the chassis means extending lots of things. For example, the propel uh, shaft driving the rear axle. And so there's two pieces. That's a cradle there with a the bearing. And then the second piece is this piece here. And these are all finely balanced. And the shelf here full of bracketry. For example, this piece here is the piece that is welded un underneath and that gives rigidity to the chassis. The holes in it are for, uh, once the welding has actually been completed, they then spray anti-rust uh, paint inside. They do that through those holes. And uh, all of these other bracketry here, uh, for example, these things prefabricated, pre-made, new mounts for the body and of course new mounts for the tray. All of these things have to be realigned, repositioned. But one of the questions that I am anticipating is why not go for the J-Max? Coil springs and all of these frankly wonderful modifications to the Land Cruiser 79. Why aren't I going the full distance? And I have a very simple answer. I don't want to a, because I don't need to, and B, what I'm trying to do here is create, I'm, I'm trying to make a very, very good vehicle great without spending a huge amount of money. This conversion is not expensive. It's, it's easy to think that this is a simple process of putting it back together again, but it's actually not simple at all. Um, brake lines, but they have to be rerouted because of the extra cross member and obviously the extra length. Um, exactly the same with the exhaust pipe. Uh, fuel lines, electrical cables. Uh, it might seem it's a simple matter of cutting, stretching and putting something in between, but it's a lot of work. So that basically wraps up day one. Tomorrow is an ambitious day. We have to reassemble everything and fit the fuel tank solution and also the tray back solution. Going to try and finish that all by the end of tomorrow. With the bulk of the conversion work completed, including the GVM upgrade, operated springs and shock absorbers, it's now time to turn our attention to some of the additional mods and equipment that can be fitted before delivery. The standard fuel tank is 130 litres. Generous, but not generous enough. We could increase its size with an aftermarket tank to 180 litres, but it hangs off the back behind the rear wheels. And we are working to get the weight in front of the rear wheels. 
So I'm going to leave that tank as standard and add a supplementary tank ahead of the back axle. It's made by a company called Brown Davis and they make actually uh, this tank which is for the 300 millimeter chassis extension and it comes in two parts. Needed range out of a vehicle is uh, about 1,000 kilometers in Australia maybe a little more than that but even in the United States, <coughs> Africa, 1,000 is about minimum. Gives me 110 liters. So I've elected not to change the, the back tank. The back tank, standard tank, is 130 liters. So that gives me 240 liters. At about 14, uh, between 14 and 15 liters per 100 kilometers. That gives me over 1,600 kilometer range. But I know what you're going to ask me next. What is all this for? And what am I going to put on the back? At some stage in the future, I will be putting a camper on the back. But first, of course, a tray must go on. And I have chosen this beauty. It's from the much admired Norworld catalogue. They build a tray specifically for the 300 millimeter extension. Final stages, uh, leading the brakes, everything is done. And now the vehicle will be put back on its wheels and it's time to put on the tray. To me, this combination of Land Cruiser 79 and Norwell tray is the ultimate manifestation of the ute. The pickup, the bucky, whatever. And now I can really start getting excited about this project. I mean, just look at it. We are very, very nearly finished with this part of the build. I've always believed that a good four-wheel drive vehicle, sometimes you can tell if it's going to be good just by looking at it. Anyway, I think that's true. And look at this one. Thank you for watching. See you next time.